everyone, Lewis here, and I'm back with a brand new interview. I'm going to be interviewing Mia Sim, also known as the Provo Mermaid. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for alerts of when I upload new content to the channel, especially those with disabilities similar to mine. In this video, Mia and I will be talking about a lot of things she has accomplished recently. From her going to Switzerland to compete in the Swiss Merlympics, to her tr trips to Japan and Mexico, and so much more. Hello, fishies. I am Lewis, also known as Merman Adventure Billy, and I'm joined by Mia, the Provo Mermaid. Hello, Mia. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Thank you for calling. I'm so glad we got something to work out today. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I'm going to be talking to you about things like the Merlympics, how you became a mermaid, what's your future plans, and so forth. Yes, there's a lot. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with how did you get involved with the Merlympics and what was it like? So I saw a couple of people applying and this Merlympics idea getting tossed around for a little while. And I'm thinking, this does not look legit. I don't know if I can trust any of these people. It's all in Europe. It's very far away. It just seems too far away to be tangible. And then I saw some American athletes getting into it. And I thought, okay, I'm going to apply and see if I even get a response. And I did. And I really need to post the video of my reaction to opening my acceptance letter because that was such a huge step into where I got now. And we get out to Switzerland. So it's in Fisch, kind of tucked in the mountains. And it is just beautiful out there. Amazing sports center. And I got to meet the actual American team that went, even though I was an individual athlete at the time, because I didn't think I would even qualify to be on the U.S. team being a representative. Um, after what you did, I think I would love to do it myself too, but getting, traveling to Europe would be hard for me because I currently have no job, but it's on my bucket list someday. I really do want to compete alongside you and the other MERS from Team USA, and I hope to do that. I'd be honored if you joined our team this year. We have a lot of applications open right now. We have three spots for adult athletes. I think we have three more for the juniors. I don't know if we're getting a kids team just yet, but I know that the adults are waiting on a couple more people here. Even if it, even if I don't join this year, I'll work hard. I'll get back in the swimming shape. And it, I've seen some of your videos, and it was a lot of fun. I thought, I thought you were amazing when you did that swim race with your tail. Thank you. Yes, it was a lot of work. That was the one event I really pushed myself for. And it's kind of upsetting when swimming just gets all over the place. And you can gain swimming shape, you can lose it just as fast. So it's that perfect mentality of rest and hard work for sure. I used to swim laps myself with the at, at a local YMCA until I lost my job and things kind of got toxic. But once I eventually find a new pool, then I'll get back. Sorry about that. But <laughs> in, in the meantime, Mia, what was it? What was it like to you know travel after that? Tr after the Merlympics, how was it? Traveling how after was the Japan? Olympics. So much. How was Japan and how was how was Japan and Mexico? It was a lot of fun, and it was so nice not bringing my equipment bag with me. That thing is so heavy. I had literally everything in there. I had my silicone tail. Gosh, sorry. This is the worst. <laughs> I had my silicone tail. Nah. I, had, um, I had two different carbon fiber fins with me. I had all my goggles, my swim cap, my swimsuits, my training outfits, my competition outfits, the photo shoot outfit. There was just so much stuff in that one bag. So getting to go on a vacation and then ditch that bag for Mexico was awesome. 
we got stuck with it in Japan. So that was kind of hard carrying all of that around. And I feel bad for making everyone help me. I take it you got it, it, it returned back to the U.S. before you went to Mexico. I did, yes, thankfully. I was so, so close to shipping it back home, but that bag would have been like $1,000 to send straight from Japan home. So I just flew home with it and then took off to Mexico, and it was a lot easier that way. Oh, oh sweet. Um, speaking of Mexico, I happen to be going there myself to Cozumel in the state of Quintana Roo this December with my friends from Dive Park. Oh, I was going to say, isn't that your, like, your certification group or whatever? Nah, it's a, nah, it's a non-profit. They work with people who, with all types of disabilities in a wheelchair. Yeah, from wheelchair users to okay. who are quadriplegia to those without limbs, those who are autistic uh -huh. and have other ailments. Because let me tell you this, I met I met this I met this girl who was a quadriplegic and was in a car accident when she was younger, and she is a mermaid. And oh, she actually did do photo shoots in the mermaid tale. Met her back in 2017. Wow, good for her. Her to Yeah, and then I met this other wheelchair user during my last trip. She actually had mermaid scale. Tattoos. That's so rad. I've seen a lot of people do those tattoos on like their arms up the side of their ribs down to their hips. It looks pretty cool. I'll be right back. I'm gonna show you something. Oh, I'm ready. All right. Um I played a role in designing this. What am I looking at? Is this a jersey? No, no, no. It's a rash guard. Oh, that's so cool. Is that dive heart? So that mm -hmm. says nice. Yep. Yeah, you can. There's. Yeah, pack me. A, at the end of this interview, I can send you the information. There's limited quality, so it costs forty dollars if you want to get your own. Uh, that's awesome. What is that just on the website? Um, actually, this was actually, actually, so, so, you yeah, have to contact a friend of mine. Um, her name is Denise Brown. Okay. Yeah, as you see here, it says divepark.org. That's gorgeous, on, though. I love that. Thanks. I, I came up with this idea one day. It's also on the right sleeve, and this is what it says on the back of all the normal, all the dive heart rash guards. It says, search diveheart.org and imagine the possibilities. I love that. And I also want to ask you another question. How did you become a mermaid in the first place? I get this question every single interview. The becoming part is still hard to explain, but for a long time, I've loved the idea and concepts of dealing with fashion design, costume design, makeup, how to make characters look very real. I grew up doing theater and movies and all these places, and I'm watching these special effects artists just go absolutely hog wild. And it is so cool to see them bring sheets of plastic or rubber or prosthetics and really bring them to life and i wanted to learn how to do that and it's still so hard i'm trying to learn silicone and all of these other adhes adhesionable adherable is that a word <laughs> prosthetics <laughs> and mermaid tails were a big one because it's so hard to make this seamless transition from your waist to the tail or what it's going to look like having your hair down be a top and after watching H2O and all the behind the scenes, I'm like, okay, this is super legit. I got to learn. And then we kind of know the story of going through surgeries at 15 and 16, trying to put my feet back together. I had to quit being a gymnast. I had to quit being a cheerleader. And then just snowball of events in my life. 
And I finally got to the point where I said, I'm just going to buy a really nice tail. And I want to make something out of this because I've seen other people do it. And I think it's fun. And I just love the idea of it. And then here we are five years later. So that's cool. Speaking of H2O, I, uh, let me get... Let me tell you how I became a merman. I seen the original Little Mermaid when I was like five years old, and I kind of always wanted a tail. But it wasn't until someone who I was once close with got me into mermaiding. She also got me into H2O. And what also sold me on why I should be a merman was Mako Mermaids because of Zach. Oh, yeah, 100%. And then... Since you mentioned that you were a cheerleader, mm -hmm. I was also once a cheerleader myself. I did a special needs cheer team once. Tried to build a special needs team that ended up being a flop, but still had some fun doing it. And speaking of acting, I kind of did some acting when I was younger. When I was, yeah, I did school plays. When I was 15, I also was involved in this fear conflict resolution video called Stop and Think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was in the first they, skit. Where, now this is shot on location. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm in the first skit where, I, you know, it was at Wordsworth Academy. You know, you know the first scene where you see the the black boy confronting the mixed boy who's digging through his desk. Okay. Well, that I, that boy who was digging through the desk was played by me. That's so awesome. Well, fun fact. If you did see that video, it was actually shot in 1999. I was 15 at the time. <laughs> and now I'm 40. No way. <laughs> yeah. I don't look it, but I am. No, sir, yeah. And back to the subject of cheer, I also did competitions. Did you do competitions, Mia? I did, yes. I liked it a lot. And I hope to one day get an all-star cheer uniform to use in underwater photo shoots. That would be such a fun concept. Yeah. And why do you call yourself the Provo Mermaid? That's kind of just the area where I live. And I wanted to just use my company name, the Abelia Entertainment Studios, for a long time. But A, that doesn't really tell you what I do. B, the online uh, engineer update of engine search optimization doesn't work well with long names. And I wanted something easy and something local because I have a lot of people around me who want to do mermaid parties. I don't do a lot of international stuff. It's all like neighborhood based. So I figured let's just do something in the neighborhood. Speaking of me, well, it was the person who I who got me into mermaiding, who I also interviewed on this channel. But what I can say about her, she calls herself Mermaid Moya Opal, and she actually her and another mermaid helped me come up with my current name. And part of it has to do with the fact I'm from Philadelphia. The last part, Philly, has to do with my favorite baseball team, the Philadelphia Phillies. Yes, Mia, the Phillies inspired part, also inspired my Merzona. Uh-huh. And one day I plan to get myself a silicone of my own made by the Mer Tailor, inspired by the City Connect Phillies uniforms, which are essentially two shades of blue, one of them being navy, the other kind of being sky blue or baby blue, and also gold. And near the near the fluke is the Philadelphia would be the Philadelphia skyline. On the on the rear of the fluke would be the love logo. You okay there? 
Yeah, I think my network lost for a second. Is everything okay still? Mm -hmm. Great. And we're still so, recording. Blue, white, gold, that's what you said, right? Actually, no. Baby blue, navy blue, and gold. Navy blue and gold, okay. I'll show you a picture of it. What, what, what my dream tail design I want the mer tail to make looks like later on. And whenever, and let's just, and my Mersona also has to do with my my character liking Philadelphia sports. The Phillies is just one of them. Then there's the Eagles yes, yes. and the NFL, the Flyers of the NHL, the 76ers in the NBA, and the Union in MLS, Major League Soccer. Yes. And you know what? The Union colors are also the same as those City Connect uniforms. The Phillies are normally, they wear red and white. Yes. And speaking of, of Phillies games, whenever I go to Phillies games, I always wear my leggings to baseball games with my jerseys. That's so fun that you get to go see those baseball games. I think that, that would be a dream for sure, seeing a Phillies game. Yeah. It, it is. Um, I also want to ask you, um, would you ever get into scuba diving? And where would you do it at? If I could 100% have my way, I want to go diving where my dad goes in Guyana. It's some beautiful coral shoreline of some type. My problem is I'm a huge thrill seeker, so I'm fairly irresponsible sometimes and I'm working on that just for dive stuff and there's a lot more risks with breathing and using compressed air and things like that. I'm just really used to the free diving methods and training like that where I have very, very little gear and now all of a sudden it's this huge responsibility to have all your tanks, to fly with your tanks, to double check your regulators, have your backup, you know, all, know all these things. So I think education-wise, it would be something very, very helpful and something I would love to do. However, I may die in the process. <laughs> um, You don't always have to bring your tanks. You can always rent them when you're at a dive resort. This is true, yes. And sometimes you can also rent the regulator and gear. But I have my own equipment because back all of it was donated to me and... I also bought some of my own equipment, like wetsuits, fins. And one of the donated equipment also includes a dive computer. Mm, that's cool. And, and I got certified locally here in Pennsylvania, up at Lake Hydra, of course. this Its original name is called Dutch Springs, which is essentially a limestone quarry that got flooded in the 70s at three years of being used as a quarry. In 2006, I got certified up there. And one of my goals I hope to do this year, if it doesn't happen, is get my advanced open water diver. Right, I like it. Right back. We're back. Um, Mia, um, what else do you have in the future as a mermaid? Um, do you do any parties, any gigs? Yes, any I have conventions? one. I have a gig two weeks from now. I don't really do conventions. That's something that's always really far away from me because I'm fairly far west in Utah. So the closest thing would be the California Mercon. And that one's always chock full. There's so many people there. And I'm afraid of getting overwhelmed. <laughs> so we're we're waiting um, to do conventions. Yeah, um, I attended since you brought up that con. I actually attended that virtually four years ago, and I happen to uh -huh. be good friends with the with the woman who organizes it, Rachel Smith of Mermaid and Mom. Okay. And my first in person con this year was Mermagicon. Did you love it? Yeah, I did. 
I got to go on behalf of my friends from Underwater for All. I got to meet the people who were featured in the documentary Mer People, including Morgana herself, the Sparkles, mm -hmm. and Pixie, Andy, and so forth. Mm -hmm. I look forward to doing it again next year. I believe it, yeah. And, you know, I also I also hope to go to California Mermaid Convention one day. So I do want to meet a lot of people in person. Uh-huh. And as for Mermagicon, this year it was held in Silver Spring, Maryland. Okay. You so should come down. How far is that from you? So Oh, like maybe two, three hours away. I had to take a, I had to get a ride oh, okay. down there. You totally should come to the East Coast and go there. It, it's so worth it. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of free diving, I'm planning to finish my free, my own free diving this year. You better. That's awesome. It's it's a good course. I like it. Yeah, my now we open water free diver. You see, two years ago I couldn't finish because diving on one breath, I messed up my right ear temporarily and I had a nosebleed. Couldn't mm -hmm. finish it last year because there was no place to do it because Lake Hydra, Dutch Springs respectively, wasn't was not open to the public uh, yet, like it is now. Then afterwards. I had to wait. Yeah, I had to wait till this year. And then I recently did my Patty Mermaid and Advanced Mermaid. Yeah, I did it with Mermaid Tasha. You ever heard of her? I I think I saw one of your posts mentioning her. Have you been like making a lot of friends out doing this? Or are you kind of diving with the same people? I make a lot of friends. And... Fun fact, I met Tasha four years ago on Facebook in a live stream hosted by Mermaid Brizzo of the Circus Sire Pod in a uh -huh. in her in her Mermaids for Marine education group. Okay. That's mm -hmm. also how I met Yame the, the Siren. Yeah, I met them. I met both Tasha and Yame. Yami, yeah, Yame, or Yum, he calls herself Yamaya, the siren. Brizzo, real name Grace Ann, actually, yeah, because of her, I wouldn't have met those people. And fun fact, those three happen to also have cameos in Mer People on, ne on Netflix. Because Tasha actually got to go to Vegas with them, you know, for the Silverton Aquarium performance. That's so cool. I've heard so many good things about Silverton. Yeah. Now, last week when I went, fun fact, when I went to do my Vance Mermaid, we went to Lake Mer Mercer Lake or Lake Mercer. We yeah. found out that found out that that place didn't allow swimming from the get-go. You see, it was a little error on the app, on the Swim Guide app that pretty much assumed it was a place for swimming. Fortunately, I was able to complete my train before we were kicked out by the lake patrol. It's one way to go, yeah? I like it. Yeah. Uh, do you plan to eat your own mermaid certifications? So I have my aqua mermaid one. I'm, I'm waiting here because I have so much working out going on and then all these random trips that I'm doing that it's just going to be really hard to make sure I get all of the water time that I want. A lot of these courses like Patty, Nowie, Aqua Natives, where I'm from, they aren't a lot of water courses. It's a lot of out of water education and then you can do the whole course in a weekend. So I want to be able to kind of rack them all up one after another because they don't require a lot of water time. But I would prefer to have more time to practice the skills even after getting certified 
that way I know I'm the best that I can be before I go and try and teach other people or deal with anything else. I do like doing swim lessons for the younger kids just because they're easier and easier to manage. So. And speaking of that, I used to help teach swim lessons at the Y myself, the thing why I told you about earlier where I used to swim lessons. Yeah. And I, and I also did swim alongside the kids on the swim team at the Y and practiced with me. And yes, I was still also considered a coach, even though I did swim. I was kind of a player coach, per se. I mean, I was older than everyone, but at the same time, I still had fun, you know, racing against the kids. Not because I'm an adult. No, 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 no. I did it because it was just fun to do. Yeah, definitely. And not to mention, that also played a role in becoming a merman. Me being involved with kids at the Y to even doing swim meets. Let's just say being an act actor briefly in high school, doing being a cheerleader, to even being a swimmer and instructor also played a role. Did that play a role in your life as a mermaid? Pulling from cheer, not really. It was kind of rough for high school where I'm from. It's just too competitive even for high school stuff. I get the attitude for when we're doing all-stars and we're really pushing for it, but high school kind of ruined it for me. I only have maybe two friends that I still talk to after being on those teams for 10 years, and it just sucks that we didn't get those long-lasting relationships that, that I wanted. And, you know, people move away and you just don't get those things anymore. So that was really hard, and it did I guess kind of pushed me into my individuality with swimming as a solo athlete because everything you do is on you. So if you make a mistake, you're the only one to blame, which is a lot easier than having all these stupid arguments between a team, right? Yeah. I still keep in touch with some of those who I cheered with. The gym I once was part of was called Stellar All-Stars and then later Sky All-Stars. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I was kind of in my 20s when I did this, and I kind of had a couple of teenage girls, well, one of them I still keep in touch with because she is a hairstylist. I still keep in touch with some of them. We've been good friends for a decade now. Well, the organization did shut down in 2019. A new organization rose up in its place called Rain. And my special needs team, when I was with Stellar, then Sky, we were called the Shooting Stars. That's so cute. I love that. It wasn't as tough and pressure. It wasn't as tough as, you know, the pressure that you went through in high school and all star cheer yourself. Did you, at, now here's another question about cheerleading. Did you ever get injured in practice or comps? I don't think I ever had stuff during season that happened other than having to get surgery. I had a bone spur that needed correcting on both sides of my feet. I needed my Achilles tendon lengthened. I was just really struggling with flexibility. And because I needed surgical correction, I was just constantly living with sprained and damaged feet and ankles. And it was just super painful to exist at that time. So that played a huge role in trying to tumble and especially be in main base because we have so much weight on us compared to being a flyer or a back spot. Everything is on you when you're flat on the ground. Um, before we go, because we got time is limited. Um. I injured myself in comp in practice. I sprained my ankles, and believe me, in 2014, a week before my last comp that year, I had a partially torn ligament. I tore a ligament, and I had a lesion. I had to wear a boot for two weeks. Yep, that's the life we live. <laughs> and. Of course, then there's after cheer, after cheer, the why, or I don't know, I'm going to say cheer, 
wasn't all bad, but let's just say, especially see I tried to build the shooting stars when I said it was a failure earlier, it's because I struggled to get more people to join. And myself, the parents of my teammates, and even the gym owner, who was also technically one of my coaches, we kind of didn't we weren't we didn't get to see eye to eye, nor we were all nor were we all, were all on the same page. In regards to competitions and uniforms, you name it. But I still had some good times. I'll never forget the cheer comp I did. Did let me tell you. I'll tell you what one of my favorite competitions was. We called this competition "Beast of the East" down in Wildwood, New Jersey, at the Wildwoods Convention Center. It always be held in the springtime. That was one of my favorite comps to go to, Mia. Did you ever go do national comps? Like, say, U.S. Finals? Yeah, did you go to nationals? Did you ever do a competition called the U.S. Finals? No, not at all. It was smaller. I did a lot of hardcore stuff just in my state. I didn't feel like going international would do for me like it did other people, so I just didn't do it. When you said, speaking of you being a base, I was also a base myself, too. Because during my final year as a cheerleader, I ended up catching the daughter of the youngest daughter of our of my one of my coaches and the owner of the gym herself. She was my flyer. I caught her in a basket toss. Scary having that risk of being a flyer. I'm glad I got out of it. There was an opportunity for me to cheer in college. And this was, you know, way past when I had stopped cheering my se my senior year and I'd switched to dance and I was doing sports medicine and exercise science and all these things. And I just never took it because I didn't know if it was ever going to be part of my life again. So I didn't want to push it any further if I didn't have to. And that's right when the transition hit of going all these things to just full blown into mermaiding. So that I can say played a huge part in what I was doing and changing my mind. Okay. Before we close out, I'm going to say, what advice do you have for those who have special needs and who would want to do what you want to, I mean, do what you do, like being a professional mermaid to even being, you know, and going to the Merlympics? It's the fact that you can do what you want. You can pick something because you want it. And sometimes you are going to have to adapt things differently. You're not going to look like everybody else, but that doesn't make you any less special or makes you look like you're working less because you still are. And if you have that worth ethic, work, at, work ethic, you deserve to do it. Thanks. And... That's all for this interview, everyone. Bye-bye. Wow, this was a fun interview. Mia provided a lot of interesting tidbits. She told me about how things went, and I enjoyed every bit of talking to her. This is Lewis saying, thanks for watching, everyone. You can also follow me on Instagram, threads, Twitch, TikTok and Facebook. Remember, it's time for a